Here's how to get WaveShare ePaper displays working with the ESP32 microcontroller. First I'll briefly cover the different types of displays, because it's crucial you know which one you have. Then I'll show you which of the five different graphics libraries I tried, I finally got mine to work with. So before you start trying to build an ePaper gadget, it's crucial to know which one you have. This is so that the graphics library can be configured to support the correct display. There are two key pieces of information you need. The first is the screen size. This is specified in inches. My flexible one here is 2.13 inches. This flat screen one is the 2.9 inch type, and the largest one I have is the 3.7 inch. The second piece of information you will need is the screen resolution in pixels. This is sometimes marked on the box, and sometimes on the back of the screen. This flexible one is unlabeled, but I'm pretty sure it's the 104 by 212 pixels model. Incidentally, I bought all of mine from Amazon, and I assume they're legit and not fake wave shares. Now let's look at the graphics libraries. A number of different graphics libraries support ePaper displays. I tried the Adafruit GFX library, the Bodmer library, WaveShare's own library, and the GXEPD library. The one that worked for me is the GXEPD2 library. Don't confuse this one with the original GXEPD library. So the first thing to do is to fire up the Arduino IDE and check that the library is installed. So to do this you go to Tools and then Manage Libraries. And if you search for GXEPD. So the one we want is GXEPD2. So make sure it's 2 and not the original one. So if it's not installed then install it here. You can also check that you've got the current version. At the time I'm recording this video we're up to version 1.5.5. The next thing we need to do is to wire up the hardware, so we need to wire up the ESP32 to the WaveShare display. So here's the pin diagram, and if you use this you'll be able to use the GXEPD2 library without making any code changes to the pins. Incidentally, as far as I know, all of the WaveShare displays have the same pins, so once you've done one it's easy to swap them over. You can normally use the same connectors as well. The most common problem with these displays not working is due to the pins being wrong, so double check and then triple check once you have done this. So once you've done the hardware, you can go to File, Examples, and then look for GXEPT2. So there's a number of examples here, and the first one I tried is Hello World, so I would strongly recommend you try this one first. So you'll notice a number of header files are opened as well. So let's just have a quick look through the code. So we shouldn't need to change anything here. What we need to do is to select our correct ePaper panel. And I would recommend going to this file here. This is the display section news style. So most people know the WaveShare black and white displays, but there are three and four or seven color ones. So if you're using one of those, then you'll have to uncomment one of these lines and then comment this one back out. So now we need to scroll down and find our correct screen. So there are an awful lot of them. I found the best thing to look for is the resolution. Normally the smallest dimension is listed first. So if you have the 280 by 480 screen, like the one I'm showing in this video, then this one's really easy because it is this one. So you have to uncomment this line here. So the other very common display is the one I've also showed here, which is the 128 by 296 display. And it was the first one, this one here, that I got working with mine. The final screen that I have is the flexible e-paper one. And this is the 104 by 212 pixels one. Unfortunately, I've been unable to get this one working. I did buy these displays a long time ago, so it's possible that the flexible cord has broken or something. Or I might have just damaged it while I was getting it to work. I'm pretty sure it did work once because it put the Snoopy on there, so I don't know why it won't work anymore. So if you are using this display, I believe it is this driver here. As always, let me know in the comments if you do figure out why this one won't work. 
Another file that you might find useful is the wiring examples here. So if you're using the ESP32 or just like a regular version of the ESP32 like I have, then you shouldn't need to do anything. But there are some samples here. So this one will work with a regular ESP32. There are also mappings for the ESP8266. So you don't have to uncomment any code here. It's just a suggestion of which pins to use. So just in case you're watching this video and you're using a different device or a different screen and you're still having troubles, then you can go to display section H. And rather than using the new style, you can use the old style. So there's a lot of screens in here and with these you can specify the pins with the constructor. So that might be useful if you're still having trouble. But again, double and then triple check that your pins are connected as shown earlier in the diagram. So now I'll connect the ESP32 to the PC and upload the sketch. So when connecting appears, it's normally best to hold down the boot button on the ESP32. Then when writing appears, you can release it again. So that's it, the Hello World has appeared and our screen is working. So once you've got Hello World working successfully, then you're good to go on the other examples. So if you go to examples, GXEPD2, and then there is a graphics example. Again, since we've set up the pins already, this should work out of the box, so to speak. You will need to go to display section new style and find the screen. So this gives you an idea of the capabilities of this little screen. I'll try and make some more videos about them. Thanks for watching.